Hey guys, so uh, yeah, welcome to this little walk cycle tutorial. Um, it's going to be quick and simple and straight to the point. Um, there are a lot of in-depth tutorials out there online and uh, you can go and study those if you want. Uh, the point of this is to actually just show you um, I did a video the other day about uh, a standard walk and just the different variations that you can do creating um, different styles of animation just based on manipulating one or two of the controllers you know so you know you can get lots of cool little styles of animation with just um, manipulating the timing and the spacing of each curve so what we'll do is we'll start uh, one of the students asked to actually just do a do the basic one first and then of course everyone can play with it the this file is available on our website you can actually download it and play for yourself so but for those that are interested I thought uh, why not just do a quick um, very simple walk cycle 32 frame cycle in Maya uh, this course is basically for those learning Maya and and you know getting used to um, animation itself and setting keyframes and things like that. We do have tutorials about how I set up my Maya scene. So go to our channel and there is a video, a YouTube channel on our website. Go to uh, there's a video of how I set up my hotkeys and things like that, and probably a good idea to get that. Um, sort it out first because you see if I press hotkeys I, I get the controllers uh, visible and not visible so yeah and that's all in the the um, uh, the nerves curves visibility thing here anyway moving forward let's just do a 32 frame cycle this rig by the way is it's pretty cool. I've been using this rig for a long, long time, teaching students all over the world. Uh, it's from Uger Ulvi Yetiskin, I think that's your name, um, Uger. And really, really cool. It's on Behance. You can actually search for Ultimate Rigs. And he has a whole bunch of them. And what I'll do is I'll do another rig with with these, uh, with these bony another walk cycle with the bony character so that we learn about the arms. But I'll do that at another on another day, and then maybe I can use Beefy. Um, and yeah, so but today we'll just start with the ultimate ultimate walker and get to terms with the timing of the feet and the shifting of the weight of the center of gravity. Okay, so but that's uh, uh, where you can buy the uh, not buy it's for free, so you can download the rig for free. And then by the way, when you bring it into Maya, make sure to reference it into your scene. So you go to File, Reference Editor, and Create a New Reference. So File, Create Reference, C, Control R, and then find your um, your path to your walker, and then import it. And I've also got the light rig uh, available if you wanted to use that. Cool. So now we have. Um, I changed the color because the the yellow one is is. <laughs> It's quite nice, but I've used it so many times I thought it would just be a little bit different. But this is what we're going to try and create today in this short little lesson. It's just a standard walk cycle. And then I'm going to teach you, in the next part, I'll teach you how to, um, to develop the character of the controller uh, and give the, give, the, give the walk a little bit more personality. Okay, so I'm just going to move this off my screen. And we're going to start with our rig, have a quick look through the rig, always super important as an animator. So we'll look at um, the feet controllers going up, so everything from the base, we have the base controller, down here we have global scale, so if you wanted to scale up and down your character you can, it's nice, doesn't break anything. Um, what's missing on the leg however, Uger, is uh, <laughs> that there is no uh, stretch on the leg, which is quite difficult when you're trying to not lock the joint. You see how the joint locks there if I rotate? So it's quite difficult. It's just something we have to live with with the rig um, and animate our way out of that. So on the feet, we have all the usual suspects. We have foot rolls and foot breaks and heel twists and really cool things like that and the ball twists. And So you're twisting around where it says whatever the word is, you're twisting around that. So if it's the ball, that's the ball of the back of the foot, you'll be twisting around that pivot. And then heel, 
uh, you're twisting around the heel, of course, the toe, you'll be twisting around the toe position, and so on. And we have a toe roll as well, which we'll be using later. Then we have the pull vector for the knee. And this has got a parent constraint, so it will it can be connected to the foot controller. So basically, if I move this uh, and I start rotating the foot out, it's you know it's quite handy to have the the knee controller follow. Some animators don't like it, but I normally keep it on, so I would uh, probably turn that on. It's either on or off. There's no choice in between. Okay. So. Um, so we can turn these on, uh, let's just turn it on. And then here's the root controller, the, the center of gravity mass controller, whatever you want to call it. Lots of fancy terms these days for what this is. Uh, it's just the center of gravity controller, the main one. And we'll be using that to do the up and down and left and right. And then we're going to do the squish and stretch uh, if we want to on the top, which is kind of a nice little feature to have, especially if it's really subtle. But you know, this character looks mechanical, so I don't even know why this is on here, but it's good to teach. Cool. Good, good, good. So, um, let's begin. Let's start with, uh, so you have your scene referenced in, you have your lighting, everything set up, and um, no animation there, so we just check everything is good, ready to go, all my hotkeys are in place, time slide is ready. I'm playing back, um, I'm doing a 24 frame per second uh, setup, so just check that you're in the same setup as me, otherwise you'll get a bit confused. And yeah, so let's begin. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll start with one of the feet, okay? Let's try maybe this back right leg and Oh, I mean, it all depends on which one you want to you want to um, go with to start with. Um, let's do this. Let's do the opposite side, right? So let's do this left leg. Okay, it's cool. And we want to bring the feet forward. So let's go into our right view, and I'm going to hide the dome for now. Okay, I might turn on the grid on this view just to see what's going on. Okay, so we have the, the 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 left foot there. We're on the wrong side. Let's go to the left view. So we'll be on the opposite side. Okay, and what I want to do is just to make sure that at frame one we have our leg further forward. Okay, maybe a value of one point seven or something like that is is quite fine. And. Uh, and then we want to have the opposite on the opposite side. So we're going to have like quite far back. Actually, 1.7 is quite a lot. Let's try and get it a little bit lower and a little bit back with this way. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is just to say to myself, like, okay, we're going to be going, our first pose that we create is going to be a contact pose. Okay. So we're going to have contact position at frame one. A lot of animators, actually, I know about five or six of them in my career that actually start with the passing position uh, as the first frame. And that's, it's harder because you're passing, so you need to have the momentum to go into that movement. That just turned into a lot of drawings, I'm sorry. So contact to contact, I like that. It's a nice way of, of thinking of everything. and. And it, and it just makes life so much easier, um, you know, when you when you're working work, working it all out. Okay. Cool. Um. So we're at frame one, and we have the left leg forward. So, but the thing is, the problem is that there isn't squash and stretch on the three. Actually, these two control controllers, I'm actually going to put them on a display layer here in my display layer. Um, I was going to call them like unused controls, something like that, save. And I just hide that because I keep selecting it, thinking it's the root, the foot controller, when actually we have these other ones. Um, so the reason that the, the, the feet have gone off the ground, okay, they're on the ground there, and why they've gone off the ground is because there's no stretch on the leg. 
But the only way to fix that is to bring the center of gravity down to the point when the legs start bending. You see? So boink, like that. So we need to have some sort of um, height of at frame one of the contact position and making it look comfortable enough. I think that's a bit too low. Making it look comfortable enough that he would, you know, put his foot on the floor at that position and and the other foot would be starting to rotate up at that frame too. So, uh, what do we do? What 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 um, is the height for this? Um, okay, I I mean, it's it's just a guessing game at the moment. So let's just keep it at maybe zero point. Uh, if you want to be specific and put 0 0.25 and just keep that as a number. It's good as you block out all the frames and you move forward. Okay, don't worry what the back leg is doing here on this right side. Don't worry about that right now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna work on this leg and we're gonna animate it going from frame one to 32, okay? And then we're going to copy and mirror the animation over to the other side. I'll show you a cool trick of how to do that old school style, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to set a keyframe. Okay, so I pressed S on my keyboard to set the key. Um, it's setting all the values. A lot of animators will go and go, oh, let me, oh, I just want to key that. And then I also want to key that one. And I also want to key that one. And maybe I'll key that one. I mean, what a waste of time. Like, seriously, just, just, uh, you know, then I have to undo all of that. I think just set the key, go back, clean up later, say, okay, well, I don't, I don't need these. So, Later on, I can delete them if I need to. But I just set the key because it's faster. Okay. So at frame one, I've got the keyframe uh, there. And uh, it is a contact position. So this actually isn't the frame you'd want to have. You'd want to have the foot more or less rotated um, back. Okay, so when you contact the foot, actually, you, if you imagine yourself walking, you're going to hit with the heel first. Okay, you're not going to just, you're not going to go, oh, bunk, flat on the floor. No, you're going to, you're going to hit with the heel first. And then, and then, uh, and then it'll go flat later. So just give it a little bit of a rotation. I mean, 20 degrees or something is fine. And and yeah, I might actually move you a little bit more forward because I want to be have the leg to be a bit straighter there. And then I'm going to set the key again at one, and now I'll, I'll just middle mouse to I'll middle mouse. Oh, sorry, I need to explain this. So I'll middle mouse from frame one to thirty-two, and I just set the key again. Okay, so I'm taking that keyframe and I'm putting it over there and setting the key. There isn't actually anything in between, so you could just go to thirty-two and also set the key. But the middle mouse um, actually just copies and pastes across. Okay, good. So, um, okay, <laughs> okay, good. That's the first part. That's the, the, the first part, no problem. The next key is at frame 17. Okay, now animators will animate the in-between, but there's no point until we have a direction of time. So. I'm going to go to um, frame 17 and we're going to translate this back. Okay, um, uh, minus, um, uh, minus something. Let's see, it. I want it to go not so much that the knee starts flapping around. And I also want to zero out this rotation. Okay. And actually at this frame, what is going to happen with the foot is it's going to be up and it's going to be rotated. But we will come to that in a moment. Right now we're just getting some timing, some speed across. Okay, and then the foot's going to come back to the front again. So at frame three, what we want to do is we want to zero out the rotation. Okay, so foot comes down and goes back. That's all you're interested in knowing, right? right now, that's the most important thing. Boom, stop, boom, stop, boom. Okay, don't worry about the part, the, the other return poses. So you're gonna have the foot uh, in this position, uh, this position, 
an overlap frame and so on and so on and then it will come down into the foot again right so you're going to have this movement and then come back down again but that's all in this section so don't worry about it for now we're going to go into the first section here of the of the feet and we want to now think about our graph editor right so let's bring up our graph editor and i'm going to just kind of i might just well for the tutorial okay i'm just going to dock it here at the bottom and then I'm going to drag it up so we can see a bit more of the graph. And my time slider seems to always do that. I'm going to do that. Okay. <clears throat> so we have a very boring, horrible curve. Um, the hourglass curve is not very really cool. The first part of this keyframe, you can see what's happening as the foot comes down. It's actually stopped. You see how the translation of the movement even though the foot's supposed to be going backwards, has stopped moving there on the ball. That's why the rig has these balls, so you can see what's going on. Um, that's happening because of the graph curve, you see. So on the contact pose in animation, we actually enter this contact pose in, in movement. What I mean by that is that we've gone to our highest point on the translation. So on contact, our foot is already moving backwards. Okay, so the keyframe at frame one needs to be a linear key. It needs to be pointing in the direction of this one at frame 17. And vice versa. So at 17, you can see towards the end here that, that the, the, the keyframe, the foot is actually stopping, slowing down there, which is not what happens to us. Our foot just goes, leaves the ground and comes back again. And here, so we need to take the handle of the curve and rotate it um, to kind of point at that. You can make a linear key, but for now, just make it sort of line up. Um, I have weighted tangents on, so that means uh, uh, <clears throat> curves and then it's weighted tangents. And yeah, you can turn them on and off here as well. And that means that I can kind of add weight to the tangent as I move around with my middle mouse button. Now we have a much smoother movement. Okay, so the foot is coming down and at the same time that ball is actually moving backwards and not forwards. Okay, happy days. Get to 17 and yeah, we need to start to uh, go the opposite direction. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So then we're going to go to like frame 20. And looking at the graph again, we just need to make sure that there is a bit of a settle on this curve coming out of this position. So we need to go to insert a keyframe. So I press I on my keyboard, middle mouse over the curve, press and insert one. You can also set a key, but I'm just uh, setting a key on Z on this curve. And it's it's going to more or less be level with the other the keyframe. I'm just holding this part here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding a keyframe in here as well. But if I lifted that up without this, you see what happens to the curve. You see, so uh, I need to kind of hold that section down by putting pinning a, a key on it and then doing the opposite, making the foot come forward in the air at frame 27, I guess, I don't know. Uh, Eight. We'll do. We'll do that. Let me just delete that. <coughs> Excuse me. Harsh. Nasty cold. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna hold that keyframe down, making sure that the exit is still uh, smooth, and then yeah, we're going up into frame 28, which would be where the foot is actually in front in front here. Okay, so it's at our, our furthest most point at 28. And yeah, so I'll insert another keyframe here. And then I'm going to give it a, uh, I can um, either drag it here or drag it in, in space here. It's also the same. And you want it to, it doesn't have to actually be that key doesn't have to be 
in front of in, higher than this key, the enter the entered key, because of what's happening to the curve, right? Because the curve itself is going over the value. So let me explain that. So if I have this curve and I just cycle it, so I turn on view infinity and I cycle by going curves pre-infinity cycle, post-infinity cycle, and click these two buttons here if you want, if you have the same graph editor. Now, the, the furthest point will actually be after 28, so it'll be in the air here. Okay, and I'm gonna take the last keyframe tangent and you'll see if I zoom in, let me show you what's going on here. Do you see how, how this is happening, this flatness? And this will create what's called a sticky keyframe. And you don't want to have those. Okay, so just line up the tangent on the pointing down to infinity, which is actually the entrance point of frame one here. Okay, and then we get this um, movement. Uh, doesn't look fantastic right now, but it, trust me, it's, it's not so bad. Okay, good. <clears throat> so, uh, happy days. Let's go on to frame um, okay so let's go on to frame um, 20 frame 20 let's go on to frame 20 I'm going to set a keyframe on this and I'm going to go to frame 20 and what we want to do here because now the body is going to be going the opposite direction we want to start to lift the foot off the ground Okay, so I'm going to be lifting it up quite high, actually. Um, yeah, quite high. And then I'm going to be rotating it uh, towards the floor. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this quite, quite a lot faster. Just so you guys kind of know how I animate quickly. Okay, that's a bit high. So what I'm trying to do is just to put the toe onto the ground at this frame and just rotate it with a 90 degree twist like that. So flat, uh, don't worry, it's not gonna be flat. We're gonna actually kid in earlier at like 13 or 14. We're gonna set a key and keep the, um, the height here then it's going to start to lift at 17 but by frame 20 it'll be a much smoother lift off the ground as we go forward and backwards um, so just at frame 20 lift it up to a value of like 1.2 and then rotate 90 degrees okay good um, so at 23 also let's try to keep we want to keep the, the feet off the ground okay so we want to try to keep um, uh, um, keep the foot off the ground so you want to lift it up even higher okay so it's up higher a little bit there and um, even at 28 we can hold it up higher a little bit higher in the air because we're still going to have a rotation of the toes sticking down here and yeah I'll do something cool and crazy like that it'd be nice up, 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 and then down. Boom, boom. All right, good. Cool, so let's go to uh, our translation. We're working on translation of Y now, and let's go to frame nine. And this is where things start to get interesting. So as the body, the, all the weight is on the foot, we need to make sure that foot is down. So I'm gonna insert a keyframe on here and hold it down. Okay, and then at frame 13, uh, I'm going to think to myself, okay, well, we're going to be adding a foot roll at some point, maybe, or we can just actually see animating the foot roll and the translation, or you always get into pops and things. So we might actually just manually lift the, start to lift the foot off the ground a little bit here, um, just a little bit, and then start to add in this rotation and all I'm interested in here is the this this intersection here this point I want that to be flat on the ground because I'm going to add 
what's called the toe roll to kind of keep the foot flat here. So the heel starts to come off the ground, but the toes stay still. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna bring that in around thirteen, um, and let's just rotate that down a little bit. And I'm gonna key. Um, oh, okay, I didn't key that. Yeah, okay, so I didn't key that. And let me just key these. In fact, you know what I might do is I might just sit. Okay, I'm going to key everything except Z. Key selected here. I'm going to key selected here, except Z. Um, what do I need to key select? Let's see. Okay. Let's key selected here. And then, right, so 13, we're starting to lift the foot off the ground. And we're starting to pin the, the, the toe roll flatter to the floor. So it goes like this backwards. So you counter animate here. But here I think I'm, again, I need to go a little higher. Uh, it's quite a tricky part, but you'll see it'll all work in a, in, in a minute. Okay, and then at 17, you can see our curve goes back down again. We need to start to lift the foot even higher at this frame. Okay. And we can continue the rotation down also at 17 and maybe add a lot of toe, toe roll here. It's a pr it's quite a blend to do this actually for maybe for you guys this, this is quite extreme but um, it's, it's how I animate it. It's how I've said I'm going to teach it so why not just show you what I'm talking about, how I animate, okay. Okay, and in the toe roll, I think there is some sort of, um, yeah, just delaying that a little bit. Anyway, we'll come back to that in a minute. It's probably a rotation thing or something, something, something that is making the we're not getting to the rotation earlier or something. Maybe I can rotate it. It's a play between rotation and, and translation. Um, and what I'm trying to say to you is the height needs to be exactly the same, the curves. So sometimes they, if they're off, they're going to get some weird results. Okay, so here we, again, we start to we need to lift these up. 20, see how we need it to be much higher. And the toe roll also very, very, um, very strong at that frame. Just so that the, the toe is just touching the ground there. Okay, and then, yeah, so then at frame 23, we can start to rotate the um, the toe roll over, so we can bring it back like this. Okay, so like that. And actually, I think Z needs to go further back at this frame, um, but we'll get, we'll get to that in a minute. Let's just get this foot in doing its thing. Okay, and then 28, we're going to have the toe roll still down a bit. And then at 32, I'm going to add a little flick on the toe roll there. And I need to middle mouse and paste that to one. Um, yeah, and just watch the foot and what it's doing. Okay, so it feels like it's sticking here quite a lot. Um, I think it might just be a distance thing. Yeah, it's probably a distance thing here. I think that we actually need to be further back at this frame, much further back here. Um, let me see what distance I've tra I'm traveling it to. 
one point minus one point three. So what was we started with minus one point three? Okay, so you see how it kind of lines up from frame one, one point three, and then the 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 exit frame is about one point three, and then we continue this foot going out. Um, let me turn off. Let me just go to normalized view, unnormalized. Okay, and then rotate uh, out of that frame. Boom, boom, lovely. Okay, getting there. Right, so good. I think um, a lot of it will come back to us once we start playing with the hips. We'll start getting um, some nicer shapes on the legs. So next step here is to copy over the animation to the other side. It doesn't have to be uh, perfect right now. Uh, we just want to get the basics going. Um, so that being said, um, yeah, let me just check. I want to rotate this now across. Okay. So um, we have 32 frames cycle cycle, but Maya starts at frame one. That means that there's 31 frames here, not 32, because that's just Maya and they're just complicated and they always like to confuse everybody in the world. And that's the way it is, but we learn to live with it and stop complaining. And uh, yeah, here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to frame one and I'm going to uh, frame 17 and I'm going to copy by holding shift on my keyboard, select the foot, the foot that's you animating, hold shift on the keyboard to 32 and drag. Okay. And then I'm going to right click, let go shift, right click and go to copy, go to the other foot here, go to frame one. And now when I paste the, the value, that is supposed to land on 17 will probably land on 16. We have to move it over. I'll show you. So we paste onto the other foot from frame one to 16. I hope that makes sense to you. I hope that makes sense to you. Okay. Okay. You can always go back. I'm not going to show it again. So you, uh, right. So then 17 would be the actual, so I've taken 16 and I've moved it over to 17 by one frame. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the other the other foot again, and I'm going to go to frame frame one to seventeen. Copy. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the other foot, and I'm going to go from seventeen. I'm going to paste from here. However, it's going to go to thirty three because there's more frames. So I'll go to thirty three and bring it back. Watch. Paste, and it goes to thirty three. So you need to type in here thirty three. Double click this area or drag it out. Take 33's keyframe and move it back to 32 by middle mouse and drag over or cut, copy, back, cut, paste or something. That's it. Now we should have the legs doing, doing their thing. Okay. Um, and those are the cool steps for now. And then we're going to move up into the body. A lot of animators actually tend to animate this up and down movement right away and then time the feet. I also like to do that sometimes depending if I have arms. So if I have arms, if I have an, a character with, with arms, then I would animate the center of gravity going up and down for sure. Uh, but because of this character, I'm just working on the feet, explaining that, and then we're going to go on to um, this up and down translation. Okay, cool. So uh, let's set a key and yeah, okay. Set a key at frame one. Um, it's a bit, let's get it to the point where there's no bending on the knees there. Okay. Set a key at one 32, set the key. You can also go to 17 and also set the key here too. This is another trick that a lot of animators do is they key in the passing positions of all three steps. So you've got one, two, three. Okay, I'm skipping through the frames and we've got the passing position. So I can also set a key here. It just helps to balance and to show where the, where the things are going in the graph editor here. 
uh cool so let's go to frame one and we need to drop the weight so as the character is now um he's been at the passing position and he's coming he's dropping his weight onto his left foot so we need to start to drop the weight right so it's it's like oh what do i do now oh, wait wow I'm, I'm so confused i'm so worried what do i do uh don't worry we need to just um just get to the point where you know everyone's happy and we're going to drop the weight onto that foot at frame four <clears throat> okay so we go one two three frames and we're going to drop the weight onto this foot even more as we're going down uh, i can see straight away i can see straight away as i pull the weight down um that we are going to have to increase the okay see this here it's because i copied and pasted over and this is now not linear linear and it needs to cycle sorry i should have told you all of that also before i'm just cleaning up the curve and the loop of that curve but i think we're going to need to have this much further back here so it might have to be much further back but let's uh let's get there in a minute because we need to also rotate the body here cool uh right so we not not move that back okay so um let's drop the weight first so we're dropping the weight down and at this frame you want to you want to you want to say to yourself like do i have to hold it here okay so a lot of animators will hold the weight of the character down at this position i also agree with that but with the character we're working with um a simple bend on the curve will be enough to hold it down that being said let's go to uh, frame eight um, and we can insert a key here okay so we're going to insert a key of frame eight and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to lift up this character because it's now in a passing position, right? So yeah, I think with the height of this step, we need to take um, on the passing position here at frame eight, we need to go all the way up so that the leg is more or less bent, it's pretty much at zero and I mean straight and it's pretty much at zero. And then at around frame 12, we need to hold that uh, translation of Y curve up. Okay. So as, it, as, as, the, as the weight comes down, you want to go into the top of the cycle. You want to hold a little bit like that. And then you want to drop down and do this, uh, this shape like that. So we're going to go and continue that up a little bit. You see these knees are popping. What I'm going to do with the knees actually is I'm going to take off the icon, IK control um, option. I'm going to drag them forward and up a little bit and then I'll turn that on again just so that they don't break uh, when I'm working okay cool uh, right so up we go and we're holding 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 let's just maybe smooth that out um, just smooth out that curve I've got hotkeys that are doing that by the way <laughs> they're just splining out the curve so again watch my preferences tutorial and you'll see and then yeah so now we're going back into the bottom part of the curve and what i want to do is just i just want to copy and paste this what i've done here and paste it onto the other side so i'll just copy it here and i'll just paste it over itself okay and then of course it's going to 32 and there's one more keyframe at the end so i'll just delete that one and i'm going to cycle this curve in pre-infinity and post-infinity why is that not working oh there we go Okay, let's delete that and cycle this. I don't know why this is doing that. Let's delete that and that should work. Okay, and then the beginning and the end keyframes, of course, you want to make sure that those tangents are working well together. And with the lowest part, it looks like, it looks like we could, I think it's a little bit too low. I think we can take these two keyframes at the bottom and lift them up just slightly um, 0 0.3 or something like that and maybe try to smooth into this key a bit more uh, don't make flat tangents it's, it's, a, it's 
a big no-no in animators. Okay, and we got this up and down and up and down and very okay, very very standard um, boring up and down walk. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is the translation of x left and right. So we can uh, focus on that. So we can go to the x curve and we go to the middle of the um, the curve of the the group, right? So you've got you've got your your first step here up until seventeen, and then you have the second step on the other side. And in the middle of that would be somewhere here-ish, right? So let's just say it's frame eight. What we're going to do is we're going to shift the weight completely onto the foot at this frame, and that means I'm turning the uh, controller all the way over to the side so that the center of gravity is more or less, this line here is more or less sitting on the toe, okay? So it's more or less on the toe and then we want to do the same thing all the way over at uh, around frame 24 to the opposite. So we'll just go over and dragging it over so that the Y curve is more or less in line with the toe there, and then you have uh, the the uh, the weight shifting left and right. So I will smooth this curve out, and um, what I'm going to do is at frame one seventeen and thirty two, I'm okay with that being centered. Uh, as the weight shifts onto the other side, I'm okay with that. But what I want to do is I want to hold these these keys for longer. So I want the curve to to come in earlier and hold a bit longer and go up and hold a bit longer and go down. Do you know what I mean? So um, so to do that, so to do that, you you select uh, the tangents. So select both tangents and then just middle mouse and drag to the side like this to create that uh, kind of shape like that. And maybe it's always good practice never to never to um, uh, to go to have a flat tangent at the bottom here so try to always uh, animate into that and when you go into the curve here sorry this might be super boring for some of you but when you go into the curve you need to have a little bit of follow through on the other side there okay and that's just years and years of practice um, yeah <laughs> There's some whiz words of wisdom for you there. Okay. And maybe I can just tone this one down a little bit more. Okay, so we're shifting, boom, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Okay, and it's quite extreme at the moment, so I can always just scale this back uh, a little. What I want to do is just to make sure that the values are both the same, more or less on both sides, so 0 0.313. Okay, so I'll just put I'll just put three one three here, just so that we are more or less traveling the pushing the weight left and right more or less the same. Okay, oops, uh, let's just soften that a bit and soften that one. And then what we what can we do next? So we can do the we could do the rotation of let's do the rotation of of Z. It's a very important one. Um, actually, for now, same thing with the knees. Let's just go and uh, turn this, uh, this stuff on. I don't know why it keeps turning off. Um, I don't know where the other one's gone, actually. Oh, it's down here. Okay, yeah. So that when I rotate, it's going to follow, the knee should follow the chest. Okay. Let's do a rotation of our Z curve. This is a very important uh, rotation this one probably the one I prefer to do um, with a lot more uh, um, cons you know I, I focus a lot on this one so how to explain what to do you you always rotate the hip this is a bit of a um, life lesson <laughs> you always rotate the hip in any character if you look at reference of humans or, or whatever it is sorry um, you always reference, uh, rotate the hip down to favor the leg that's being left behind. 
this is what I how I remembered it when I was learning animation, how I taught myself to to remember that the leg that's being left behind always rotate to favor it. Okay, so if you're rotating back in Y, you rotate back towards it and rotate in Z, you rotate back towards that as well at, fra at whatever frame the leg is back. Um, okay, so let's take a rotation of Z there and middle mouse to 32, set the key, and then we'll go to 17 and we'll do the opposite on the other side. I don't know what the value is I put in minus 7.2. Um, let me just check my notes. Yeah, it's about 7.2. Um, and let's just pull that down a little bit. Um, okay, let me just cycle this curve so I can see what's going on here. Okay, and then with the rotation, you you you're rotating over as you go as the weight is going onto the other leg you're rotating with the hip back and then as as the as the translation of weight the x curve goes in this direction then you you're obviously going to have an overlap of said rotation so as the translation moves the other way you overlap you see there's the overlap happening on the rotation and uh that's pretty much it. I mean, it's it's quite straightforward. The curve itself is pretty boring right now, and um, we'll probably end up offsetting this a little bit. But one thing I definitely do is I never have a flat tangent. So I'll take these two curves, let's take the last two handles, and I'll rotate them back like this. Okay, a little bit like that. And then with this one, I will rotate the other way like that so I'm just adding a little bit more variation into the curve and just letting it rotate on its own okay the next one is our rotation of Y so this is the rotation left and right that our hips do and same thing so we're, we're favoring the leg that's at the back so frame one we can rotate Y in rotation of y, we can. I don't know what the value is. Let's let's say negative ten. Seems good. Middle mouse to thirty two. Set the key. Let me just check. I haven't broken tangents. Okay. Set the key. And then at seventeen, you want to be the opposite. So you can actually just type in the value here of ten if you wanted to. Remember that this the cycle I'm teaching you. It's pretty quick. I'm not faffing around too much with uh, with. Uh, any of this stuff, uh, you know, so same thing with the rotation of Y, I'm going to select the handles and I'm going to rotate them back a little bit and then rotate this one in that direction. Okay, so it looks a little like that upside down shapes, they more or less mirror each other. Okay, <laughs> the, uh, the translation left to right is pretty strong, but um, it's also pretty cool. Good. And the last one we need to, ro to rotate is X. And the X rotation is a little bit different. Um, it's a little bit trickier. So how to explain it? So as we're coming, as we're putting the weight onto the foot, right? Uh, if you imagine when you were a kid, you used to run and, 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 and you, you know, you jump do the long jump or whatever and you you landing in in the soil whatever <laughs> excuse my trying uh, you jump you run you know you're running and then um, you 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 run you jump and you land in the soil well what happens to your head when you're coming down your head is looking up right so as you're coming down and your feet are extended and you want to land on the ground and your hands are up in the air your head is up with that principle in mind, as every time we walk, our head is up like this. It's rotated up on the contact position. Okay, and that is true for the first frame and the last frame. And then on the seventeenth frame, we're also upright, so that's also rotated up. Don't copy and paste uh, that one. So what happens then when 
when the weight comes down? Well, not immediately. We are completely rotated. We need to have an overlap. At frame four, sure, we're a little bit rotated down. Okay, a little bit. Um, rotated down in X. But at frame eight is the most exaggerated part. So, and why? Because because the weight is, so we've been pushed up by our, by the, the cycles, so we've been pushed up, which is actually creating an overlap on our head. So we need to rotate the head to look down to the ground at this point. So at frame eight, that's our most extreme rotation down. Okay. And yeah, so then as you're getting up to towards frame uh, 12, you're coming more or less back to, to where it was at the beginning of the cycle. And then uh, frame 17, yeah, same, same. And then we get to 20, yeah, more or less frame 20, we can start to rotate down again. And then 24 is extreme. And then 28, yeah, it's coming back up uh, ever so slightly towards the top. And yeah, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. It's actually nice to not have a perfect cycle. And, but just bear in mind that you don't want to be too much of an offset between the first step and the second. We have some flat tangents here, so I'm just going to tidy that up by rotating those handles. And let's rotate that up nice and soft. And you can see what's happening here is actually the foot. If I turn on our dome again, you can see the foot coming off the ground. Do you see that? Boom. The foot is locking and it's coming off the ground. And this is where you get to start to tidy up your cycle. So there's a lot of things that we can do to fix this. Um, if we had squash and stretch on the leg, we'd probably add that in around, around about now. And, uh, and um, we can we can do lots of cool things. So we could take even the Z curve and we can offset it by a couple of frames so that the leg starts, uh, doesn't bend there, that frame, and the foot doesn't come off the ground. Or we can do the simplest thing, which would be to have a look at our translation of Y value of the curve and see if we maybe can, at this frame, um, maybe lower it, lower it a little bit. So we could take the whole curve. Don't just lower that part. Yeah, we could take the top part actually and just lower that a little, a little bit. Another thing that is also not working is probably the translation of Z of the foot. So, you know, you want to go in a, in a, at the correct speed going back. So, um, Maybe at this frame, the foot would probably not be as far back. It, there's a whole bunch of things that you could do um, to get that to not break, you know. Okay, let me check on the other side if we're doing the same thing. Uh, yeah, so we're doing the same on the other side, of course, because we are mirrored. So I will, here I'm going to just lift, lift this part a little bit more forward, a little bit, and I'm also going to rotate the Z curve. Um, oh, what have we got here? 8.72. Okay, so we're rotating a lot on that side. 7.4, 7.2. Okay. Oh, you can see that big pop on the leg there. Bang. You see that? It's really, really strong. I bet it's on the other side. Two, not so much. Oh, we worked on the other foot. Okay, cool. All right, and let me just tidy that up then because it's going to irritate me. Uh, I think it's the translation of Y. Okay, look at that. See, there it is. It's a big pop in the in the curve. Okay, that was that was the problem. It wasn't so much. Um, okay, good. So that's looking a bit nicer getting a lot of rotation up and down on the head. It's looking cool. Um, getting some pop there on the leg. And I don't know where that's, I think it's coming from the knee maybe even. Oh, okay, look at the shape. So, um, 
that's cool. And <laughs> I think one thing I am going to do right now is I'm going to uh, show you now what to do with the the uh, rotation of the foot itself coming off the ground. So let's just assume, let's just take the feet and let me just take these two and take this off and just leave them in world space there. And you'll see how that affects the leg. This one is obviously not listening to me either, so take it off. Okay, so that's actually working much better on this rig. Okay, the shift in weight I think is a little, a little hectic. And what we're going to, I'm going to show you is how to add character to this walk. That's the whole point of this, right? So let us. Um, I also want this foot. I want this foot to go further back here at frame twenty. I think I mentioned that in the beginning of the course, of the lesson. So I'm going to take this whole section. I'm going to push it back ever so slightly. Now you see, but now we're getting that part. Let's see if that works actually. Yeah, it's so much nicer. I'm going to do that for the other side too. Um, it's furthest part back is this one. So let's bring that back and take this whole thing back a bit. And how I'm going to compensate to fix the popping on the leg is uh, the rotation of Z here. So I'm going to take Z and we're going to bring it earlier, the rotation, and probably it would be great to maybe increase that rotation there. And then we have to do it on the other side too. So increase that rotation on the Z curve, the body. There's the pop again. So I'll rotate it up. I don't know what this value is again, minus 11. Minus 11. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not easy to sort out pops and things like that. Maybe I'll do a whole tutorial about that. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to scale up the rotation of Y value too. Let me just remove this dome. A bit better. Yeah, the shift in, in X is, is kind of hectic, so I'm just going to scale that down a bit as well. Okay, now, one thing for sure is we never walk with our feet so far apart from each other. Okay, when the foot comes off the ground, it comes around in a circle like this and plants here and here. That's what happens to us when we walk. That being said, we're going to just key that in. So we will go to frame one on... Uh, on the, this uh, this foot, and I'm going to go to frame, let's say 13. So as the foot is leaving the ground, let's say seven from 17 onwards, I'm going to go to frame 20. I'm going to rotate the foot in its Y curve and in the um, this X curve, I think it is. And just adding a bit of shape change to the foot as it comes off the ground. I can even continue that rotation. And then it just snaps back into place. Here you see how the knee is not be not working properly. So with the knee, I'm going to set a key at 117. And on the passing position, this movement, I'm going to drag the knee out a little bit to get more of a nice C curve on the foot. Now just middle mouse one to thirty-two, so it comes back again. The knee controller, and with the foot, what I want to do is I, in general, I want to have the the position of X this curve. I want that to be a bit lower. I mean, a bit more inside the body. So I'm going to go into my front view. Um, it's the wrong way around, so I should have done this the other way. Go to the back view. Let's turn on the grid and I want these feet to be dragged in a bit more okay so if you drag it in you can see where you're gonna drag it to and I'll just bring that in probably there 0 0.12 
maybe that's good. And then that would be plus, I guess. So that would be plus. So 0 0.12, all of them. Okay. And then here, let's just do the rotation on this foot. So keyframe one at frame seven, we can rotate the foot in and maybe a little bit of uh, Z rotation. So we're rotating uh, in this Y axis here. Okay, and we can continue that rotation a little bit. And then it should just come back to the beginning, frame 17, remember, because we set the key. Then we'll take the knee controller, set the key at 17, 1, and halfway through we can bring the leg, the knee out, so that we're getting a bit more of a nicer curve on that knee. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, let's take just quickly take a look at the rotation curves. I just want to make sure I'm not snapping into a flat tangent, which I am. And here, and here. And let's go to the other foot, do the same. Let's just check. We are not snapping in, going straight into a flat tangent. We are. So let's tidy that up. Okay. So in terms of basic walk cycles, I think we are pretty much okay. We've learned how to do the, uh, the basic walk, standard animation, uh, how, we, how I showed you the other one in the beginning, and just shifting the weight left and right. And now I'm going to, in part two of this lesson, animation thing I am going to teach you how to add character to your standard walk cycles okay so get this one done the link to the file will be under the description of the video and it's on our website and yeah you should come subscribe to our channel if you're just watching this for the first time or come do some of the walk cycles or the elephant walk cycles or the dog walk cycles if you're just learning animation um, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one cheers